say welcome to all of you guys out there in the uh, in Litchfield County and around the area. Um, and before I get started, I just want to uh, just to say congratulations to all of you students who are graduating from high school. Um, not the kind of year that you expected it to be, and uh, but you know you're going to have a good story to tell each other, each of your um, your family in the future. So what we're experiencing is very unusual. Obviously, it never happened in our lifetime. And our generation. So I just want to say congratulations on the milestone of graduating from high school. It's a, it's a huge thing, and um, I hope that you can have a little bit of celebration, virtually or otherwise. Um, that's it. So um, I'm going to actually have two current Team Success Scholar students coming in at some point soon. They're actually finishing up the session that you probably went to um, at the six o'clock, six to seven. Uh, Aaron Sullivan and David Castillo. Um, they're current students at Northwestern. So what I want to do is I'm going to go through a PowerPoint and like everybody else out there in the world, I'm learning all this technology and uh, figuring it out, but uh, we did a test run this afternoon. So uh, just a few housekeeping things. I believe you, your microphone is uh, blocked. So you can't, there's no, you can't ask questions other than the chat session. So just make sure that your chat um, panel is open. And if you want any questions, have any questions at all, along the way, then please um, just send them out. And if I don't answer them right away, then we'll make sure we, we get all the questions answered. Um, so before we get started, uh, I see I submitted my application to Team Success where we'll receive a confirmation once it's received. So for the student who have said that they already submitted their application, um, is it a paper application or did you do the online application? And that would be from Andrew. And while Andrew, you're answering that, what I'm going to do is um, load up my PowerPoint um, and I'm going to just, um, type in and then I'm going to load it up. Hold on. <clears throat> ah, okay. Paper application. That's a very good point. So let me just uh, move over to my PowerPoint and I will ask, uh, answer Andrew's question. So Hold on to your reins. We're moving over. All right. And now what I want to do is open up my chat so I can see all the questions. All right. If you guys have any problems seeing or hearing anything, then please just uh, pop out a chat in the session. So Andrew asked a question about, um, or he said he already submitted a paper application. So Andrew, um, I have with me um, all the applications that were submitted before March 12th. Um, and actually, I was away from campus. I was actually out of the country uh, and didn't. And when I came back on campus, basically the campus closed. So I have all the paper applications. But what I need everyone to do, because we're obviously living in a, in a virtual world right now, I need 100% everybody, even if you fill up a paper application, to please complete the online application, okay? That's a brand new thing. It wasn't out on our website a month ago, but it is out there now. It's the only way that we can know that you want to apply to the program because right now we're not accepting any paper applications, any packets, any documents or anything because of the COVID situation. So the only way I will know that you're out there and you want to apply is if you do the online application, all right? And I'm just going to put that out there on the chat session. It's NWCC. Uh, sorry, nwcc.edu slash success. And the link is right there and it's on the slideshow too. But if you go to that website, don't go there now, stay here. But if you go to that website, there is an online application, you fill it out. That will tell us that you're interested in applying. It's the first step. And then the next step is for you to collect your documents. We're going to go all the way through that. All right. So, um, I know that uh, you will recognize faces here, and this is our very first, the very first slide. Hi, Erin. Um, so these are all students, just as a little background to this picture. This was actually last August. Uh, one of the last, the first things you will do as a Team Success Scholar is we all go on an overnight retreat in the Northwest corner, and it's a chance for first, second, and third year TSSers to get to know each other. So these are students from all different majors, all different schools. Uh, they are first year, second year, and third year uh, Northwestern students. And we all come together. And if you guys 
probably saw Mike Emanuel maybe out there. Well, you, if you're criminal justice and some professors um, and me and my colleagues. So anyways, that's us. Um, I want to do. Can, OK, so over on the right hand side, just want to mention that uh, this program is funded 95 percent by a federal uh, Department of Labor grant. It's called the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act grant. It's federal funds that are meant to be spent on community college students who typically are facing barriers. Northwest corner, the biggest barrier by far is transportation. So the money we get from the federal government, a lot of that gets spent on either gasoline for your car, gas cards, or it can be car repairs, or it can be uh, driver's training. That's one of many ways that we can spend the money on you. But it's more than just about money, but that's one of them. Um, when I said 95%, we actually have um, uh, money that comes from Northwest Community Bank in Winstead, Connecticut. So if a student is not eligible under these, what we call WIOA, the Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act funds, if we go through the whole process and we find that the student is not eligible by those federal guidelines, then we can take some of those students, it's a, it's a limited number, but we can take those ineligible students by the WIOA guidelines under bank funds. So when people say, hey, well, you know, my situation is different. I don't think I'm going to be eligible, blah, blah, blah. You have to apply because everybody at any level, whether it's academic, um, financial guidelines, um, you know, any kind of thing that you think might disqualify you or make you ineligible, don't think about it. Apply because the money is out there to support um, students. OK, and um, so I'll, I'll come back to that. Erin, you, you're all connected and everything, right? Yes, I'm good. Thank you, Susan. OK, um, you want to introduce yourself real quick in case they didn't see you already at six o'clock. And I, yeah. I heard you were already a superstar at six o'clock. <laughs> Hello, everyone. If you haven't already met me, my name is Erin. I'm a liberal arts and science major at Northwestern, and I'm also a member of Team Success. And if you guys were in the last meeting, David will be joining us shortly to answer more of your questions as well. And I'm here if you have any. Um, if you have any questions that you want me to answer right away, please put it in the chat. I wrote a little welcome bubble there for you. So if you have any questions, I'll answer them immediately. Good. Thanks, Erin. And if uh, Dave uh, pops in and I don't happen to see him pop in, then just uh, yell, OK? All right. Okay. All right, going to the next slide, I hope. Good. All right, so whoop, went one too many. My computer's a little bit slow. <laughs> All right, um, so I've never had to make a PowerPoint before for Team Success Scholars because typically what I do is I come to your high schools and I meet with your high school counselors and they find students. And, and normally it's face-to-face. -face. I would bring students like Aaron with me and the, we have face-to-face. -face. Can't happen in this current COVID situation. So um, I tried to do the essence of what the program is about. Um, it isn't a club. A lot of people think it's a club. It's not a club, but it's a, a cohort, which is kind of a fancy word for just a group. Um, we have had as many as 36 students, but right now we're averaging about 35 students. So think of it as kind of like a normal class size. We found that if it got beyond that, then the effectiveness of the program kind of decrease so we're going to keep it at about 25 so you don't get lost in the in the group and the the biggest thing you know i can describe is i always use the words money and it's mentoring it's support for you throughout the time they're at northwestern so the m m being money okay because that's part of it but a bigger part of that a lot of times is the mentoring just it's very holistic which means um we touch on every facet of the student's life everything from home a lot of times like when Aaron and I will get together. I'm like, how are classes? How's work? How's home? How's life? That's pretty much it. That's the four pillars. <laughs> and um, you know, in, if you're not doing well in a class, it might not be have anything to do with the academic part. You could actually be very capable of doing well in the class, but it could be that maybe you don't have food. Maybe you don't have a quiet space. Maybe you don't have a computer that has good internet connection. You all know what that's like. So those conversations get um, deep and really, you know, that's how we can help you. It's like, maybe it's, you just need a new computer. Maybe, you know, you need some help with food. Maybe you need to go talk to a tutor about the math test you has failed. So it's a broad spectrum, what we address. Um, and just uh, some pictures down here. Um, we've actually had, Erin, uh, can you see my mouse moving around? Yes, I can. Okay, I gotta. 
<laughs> um, we uh, an important part of the Team Success Scholars program is um, allowing students to go to conferences nationally, internationally, all over the place. So these are students that went down to uh, Washington, D.C. for a conference. Um, and any college student can do this. The difference is that TSS a lot of times can help fund that where you would normally not have the money to do that. We can help you with some funding, help you to find other sources, that kind of thing. So, and then the, the, a lot of these are from camp, you know, around the campfire, that kind of thing. <clears throat> I'm only hitting the button once. Make sure I don't go too fast. Okay. Um, whoop, there it goes. Went twice. Sorry, went back one. <laughs> um, so, what do you get out of T TSS? And, you know, and, and this is really kind of a list of most of the things. It was really hard to kind of like, decide on everything, but mentoring is a really, really big piece of it. It's those face-to-face -face conversations with, um, with me. I'm the primary mentor for the students, but I do work with two awesome women on campus, Laura McCarthy, who directs the Academic Success Center. So she runs the, um, the tutoring, and she also is the piece that what we call um, uh, proactive advising, which means you have an academic advisor. You have, if you're criminal justice, you're going to be talking to Mike Emanuel, who heads the criminal justice department for what classes should I take and what all that kind of stuff. Laura is kind of our internal um, advisor about what to sign up for next semester. We always tell you, you know, I tell you meet with Laura, but then also meet with your 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 faculty advisor. Um, I also have a program assistant, Jesse DePonte, who uh, was just on maternity leave, but she's back and uh, she is uh, takes care of the financials, but she also um, does what we call study coaching. So I'll bet if I asked you how many people have taken a class or been to a workshop that showed you how to take notes. You can chat if you want to and, and <laughs> let me know. But typically when people you know walk into a classroom and they say, OK, take notes, you're like, OK, and then you just get a paper and a pencil and you do whatever. But study coaching is actually a way uh, for you to study not more to do better, but to study more effectively. So that's just one of many things. Um, Jesse will also help you if you have a paper and you need some help with like uh, laying out the, the outline or writing the thesis statement, that kind of thing. So the three of us are really uh, a really powerful team. We hit on you know the, the academic part, the, the studying part, and the mentoring part, and we all work together to have a great program. Um, there's a lot of career and educational guidance. I know that many of you are going to walk through the door thinking you're going to be thinking you're going to be a um, a nurse, and sometimes you end up might being something like a history major. It happens, <laughs> and sometimes it happens more than once and yep. twice, yep. Um, and that's normal and that's okay. Okay, it's totally totally okay. Aaron, tell me if I'm getting too dark because no, the sun's going. <laughs> okay. Um, so there's a lot of conversations about, you know, are you, do you like this class? Do you want it to switch your majors? That kind of thing. So a lot of talk about that. Um, a lot of financial assistance. We help you with tuition. Um, we help you with books, transportation, food, housing. But always keep in mind that it's very much a play ball program. The more you put into the program, the more you will get back. And when I say get back, as far as like, you know, uh, mentoring, um, advice, and financial assistance, that kind of thing. So internships is a big thing. That's right. Whoop, I clicked again. Now it's going to go. <clears throat> I got to stop clicking. Internships um, are, are typically off campus, which means that, and that's typically for the second year student. On the first year student, they typically try to find them jobs on campus, um, in different departments, kind of keep them close, keep them on campus so that they have a chance to get to know the different departments, the staff, the professors, that kind of thing. And then in your second year, we typically try to find you an internship off campus. Erin, you want to pop in real quick and tell them about what you're doing right now? Because Erin's actually in her second semester, yeah. but she's so awesome yeah. that we already kicked her off campus. <laughs> <laughs> so my very first semester, I worked at our food pantry. So if some of you tuned into the last meeting, it's any student can come and get food if there's any food insecurity. It's a really great thing that we offer. It's called Food for Thought. Um, it's located in our Founders Hall building. If you ever need resources or anything like that, just ask someone to show you there. But I worked there through TSS and then my second semester, I, which is currently, I had an internship at, at Advance. 
So I worked with special needs adults, te teaching them everyday life skills. Um, and it was just really amazing to get the life skills necessary to have a job off campus and just to see this a field completely different than what I'm currently in. I work retail, so having an internship and a job like that was so amazing and it opened my eyes to a lot of more opportunities that I could have in my future as well. And it was just amazing, like seeing the inner workings of a program like that. So just really awesome. And TSS offers you so many amazing opportunities. Thanks, Aaron. And, uh, and of course, uh, I don't know if you're thinking about it, but a really, really important part of being a part of this program and getting these internship experiences and doing things like what Aaron's doing as uh, speaking before, um, you know, high school uh, students is this is a fantastic thing to put on your resume. So when you go apply for jobs or you're applying to transfer to a four year university or for whatever you're applying for telling them that you're in a uh, college and career success program that you've had an internship uh, either on campus and or off campus are very, very powerful things to put on your resume. They're also great things to have to start a conversation on. So tell me about that uh, job you did with, uh, you know, at, at advance, that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, feel free anytime if you guys have any any chat away, no problem. <clears throat> um, is, so we offer, Erin, do you wanna say something? Oh, sorry, I was just saying that I get so many different opportunities through TSS and they're also different. So like Susan was talking about, we do have internships, but there's so many different kinds of internships. Um, and it's very personalized. So Susan knew that I was interested in psychology and that's why she placed me where she did it at advance. Um, and you work with each other, you talk about where you want your future to go and they place you somewhere that would best build yourself and your resume. So it's just really, really great. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> You're great. Yeah, actually uh, we have Nicole Rogers. She's from Wilga High School. She's interested in floral design. She's working at a florist shop in Torrington. Um, I have a, actually Melissa Malum, she's interested in psychology too. She's in the, in the picture here. She's uh, interned last semester with Primetime House in Torrington and working with adult uh, 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 participants with special needs and uh, love that. And David's still kind of new to the program, so we haven't placed him anywhere yet. So, um, so incentive stipends, we have stipends along the way at the end of every semester. Um, I evaluate the student's performance about, we have a 12 point system about, uh, are you engaged with your classes? Are you engaged with your professors? Um, are you coming to all of our workshops? Are you attending your one-on-ones? There's kind of a 12 point thing. And based on that, I actually give out um, uh, incentive stipends. And every time you get a credential, which could be like a surf safe certification or a paraprofessional or um, CNA, you get actually an incentive for that. So it's just kind of little rewards along the way. Um, professional development, I'll skip over. We'll come back to that. And civic engagement, I'll come back to that or come forward to that. <laughs> All right, so what makes, what I say, what makes TSS great? <laughs> it was re It's really hard to quantify what this program is really about. Um, but if I was to use one word to describe this program. Erin, um, you can tell me if you think of something different, but I would call it relationships. It's about connecting with people and not just other students, but it's also connecting with staff, with professors, with the people you intern with out in community, um, with the people that you see in these conferences across the country and internationally. Um, it's really about relationships and how that will help you to find yourself and find your voice. Um, and, and eventually that could be your future you know, going to college, a future job, that kind of thing. Um, and I put these pictures out here actually, because these are pictures that were taken the first week after COVID shut us all down. And it was pretty freaky. It was like triage, you know, it was like, oh my God, I have like, how am I gonna run this program? How am I gonna find these people? We found each other, <laughs> we, we, we figured it out. And this is actually less than a week after um, pan the COVID pandemic shut down. And I wanted to just say, hey, you know, I'm out there. I want to see that you're out there. I care about you and um, let's connect. So we are still connected. We have Thursday workshops every Thursday. And this was actually our first ever virtual Thursday workshop. And it's our replacement for our, our awesome TSS room on campus where everybody's saying, I miss that room. I wish we could go there and hang out. It has computers. It has really squishy, comfortable uh, chairs. 
Um, we have uh, a couple decks of cards in there. Um, I, last I knew there was a badminton racket in there, but it's a place where you can go and study. There are actually computers in there. People do actually study in there, but it's a really a nice dedicated space where you can come and you can just you know, help to make those bonds with these, these people. And I guarantee you, Aaron, can you talk about camp real quick? Like, was it like the first five hours of camp when you know no one? So I have never been camping besides that too. So that was a big shock, but I came in, I knew one other person who went to high school with me who got into the program and we were just so nervous. We were going camping and she had been camping before, but it was my first time. I didn't know anybody there, but by the end of, not even by the end of the night, by the end of the first two hours, we were all so close already. And I made so many friends from TSS, that, but they're honestly my family. Like you walk into school or even now with the online meetings and you know everybody and everyone's just so loving and great. And it's like Susan said, it's all about relations, but we just have such a great family at Northwestern and TSS is its own little family in one, so. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Um, so yeah, so you know, based on these things that you experience and uh, you know all the the uh, you know the TSS workshops and the work and uh, stuff like that, it's opportunities for you to grow to network with professionals. Um, and as you know, Erin is speaking before groups, and she's actually also a college ambassador, which is allows her to do things like this. Um, if we were on ground, she would be going out to high schools and talking before groups and, and stuff like that. So students in TSS are looked at as leaders on campus and in the community, and they are many times tapped to speak before events and to do things because they know that they've had workshops on, on speaking skills, they know how they've had actually leadership training, um, and there's a certain um, confidence that grows in you as you go through these things. And I can tell you, I'm nervous doing this, and I'm sure Aaron is like a little, you know, bleh, but each time you do it, you get a little bit more empowered. You feel like, okay, I, I can really do this. And um, you find after a while that you have a, a, a you have a story to tell and and you have something to share that's valuable to the audience. So um, conferences, we've had students go to, we actually had two students go to Spain. I was actually able to be a part of that group. Um, it's through a cross-cultural course, um, not part of TSS, but actually outside um, Sharon Gusky. Um, who's head of the science department. She has a National Science Foundation grant to send students to Spain, France, Germany this year. Next year, it's going to be other places. Unfortunately, France was canceled. German might not happen. But two TSSers were uh, tapped to go to, the, to, the, to these, um, to go to this, uh, to Spain, to a cross-cultural course. Um, we've had students go to England for the Oxford Consortium for Human Rights. Um, Melissa Malum uh, from Housatonic was actually supposed to go, unfortunately, in March and it got canceled. Uh, but we've had other students go to that. We've had students go down to DC. So the opportunities are there. And again, TSS will help fund those experiences. So you're not, you know, footing 100% of the bill. Um, and we talk, to, kind of talk about the other stuff. Feel free to kind of ask questions anytime. Um, so sometimes I get the question, can I do this with all the other things I got going on? Because I'm really serious about my studies and I don't want to add too much to my plate during this whole transition from high school to college. And, you know, I can tell you this is really manageable. It's not a class. And so I wanted to quantify kind of what does it mean in a week's time? What does it mean to be a TSSer? And the picture I chose here is actually President Rook, which I believe you've all met. And on the very left is Professor Mike Emanuel. He runs the Criminal Justice Department. And these guys are actually working on a thing called community action planning, but this is our room. There's the kind of the squishy, comfortable chairs. And that's where everybody plays cards all the time. And behind you can see some computers. Um, there's a big giant whiteboard across one whole wall. Um, and my office is actually in one corner, but it's a really great room to engage. Um, and I kick people out of the room if they're too noisy and you want to study. So no worries about that. So a commitment level once a week, you meet once a week, one on one with me, and it's typically 10 to 15 minutes. Um, and Aaron will tell you that sometimes a lot of times weeks we miss each other because I have meetings, they have commitments. But as long as you keep that communication open, we're good. Um, every Thursday, 1145 to 1, we have a workshop. And they can be on anything from financial literacy, professional development. We have guest speakers from the community. We've actually had from other colleges. We've had international speakers. Uh, we had actually had a Holocaust uh, survivor come in and talk about his experience last year. 
Um, really, really empowering stuff. This Thursday, we're going to have actually a, um, a panelist with about addiction. So all different kind of cool stuff. And we go on trips. We go to college tours. Um, we actually went to the Warner Theater and we watched a play in January, late January or fe early February. We just went to see a play together just for no reason other than to have fun. And we had pizza beforehand, which was really great. <laughs> Um, and then uh, we require you to have at least three hours of tutoring every week. And honestly, if you are any kind of interest in being a great college student, that three hours is like really, really small. So Aaron, you want to pipe in like what you think that number should be if you want to be a really good college student engaged. So D Susan did touch on the fact that some people might find it overwhelming by looking at it as a number, but the second you step foot into college and you start at Northwestern, you'll realize that you're going to be spending a lot more time on campus than you thought. Um, so for me, I do have a very busy lifestyle, but I was at school for two days a week for in the free time that I had. I was always in TSS. I would probably have like eight hours of study time. And when we say tutoring hours, it doesn't mean necessarily sitting down with a tutor and scheduling that it could just be doing your homework in the TSS room. And like Susan said, it's a great place to just sit down and get started on your work and focus. So I found that being in the TSS room and being a part of this program in general made me much more dedicated of a student and focused on work. So a lot of people think, oh, well, how do you do it all? Like, how do you focus on this one thing? Or like all of these different things are juggling at once with all the different programs or clubs. TSS helps you to hone in and stay focused on your success and on your future. Um, and I know David can attest to this too. He just chimed in. So if you want to unmute and say a little bit about your experience, David, that would be awesome. David, you're in here. I am late. <laughs> That's okay. Just, the, I didn't have the link. I didn't have the link. Okay. Uh, you want to introduce yourself real quick? Yes, my name is David Castillo and I'm part of the TSS program. I was a late entry like I am now. Uh, <laughs> it's It's been a very great experience since because I've met a lot of a lot of friends that I can call family now that actually they come to my house, they get haircuts, I hang out with them. It's pretty cool. Like, it's, it's a pretty good experience. And TSS has has given me a lot of motivation and desire to put more towards academics as far as like going to the library. I've been to, I was in the library for at least six hours, one in like before a class and it's put, it's given me a lot of, uh, how do you say that? Uh, like motive to do something to uh, like strive towards a goal or a career, you know? and Good. provided me with a lot of opportunities. That's Thank you, David. No problem. All right, and I just wanted to share, um, like, um, how good is this program? Like, you know, what is it going to do for me? Well, we've I've been following statistics for a while now, and we actually had this program on campus, believe it or not, for 16 years, and I'm in the process of actually writing the grant, and so I'm doing my number crunching, and we have over th we've served 309 students in the 16 years. So we have a lot of data points like, is this program working? Like, do we need, and every year, you know, Jesse and Laura and I, we sit down and we're like, do we want to do the same thing? Do we want to do a different? We got some good things figured out. And what we have found that based, if you compare TSSers to non-TSSers, you guys, the TSSers, they earn a higher GPA, which means, you know, it's not that you're necessarily smarter people, maybe you are, but it's that you are you've learned how to effectively study you've got some good study habits some good um you know time management is a big one how do i manage work and home and life and fun um you know those kind of things and that's a lot of the the recipe for success is learning how to manage the time so tssers have a higher gpa on average you math and english uh, are everybody has to pass these classes if they want to graduate from college and TSSers complete that successfully sooner than non-TSSers. Um, finishing your college degree, there's this magic uh, phrase called 15 to finish. If you take 15 credits every semester, then you will graduate in two years. A lot of times that's hard to do because what if you fail a class and you have to repeat it? 
um, or you have to take developmental coursework, which doesn't count toward those two years. So all of these things kind of bump the or kick the can down the road a little bit. But what we have TSSers do, and this is a 12 month program, which means for the 12 months of the year, you have to be doing something under these guidelines. And so what happens over winter break, which is between Christmas and Martin Luther King, roughly, students are in their first year will, <clears throat> will actually take a um, acting class at the Warner Theater, which sounds frightening to some people. Um, everybody takes it. And if you just attend and you give it your best effort and we have this big celebration at the end, you just earned yourself three credits when everybody else was sitting home doing nothing. Same thing happens in the summer. We encourage students to either work or to take a class. If you do that, then effectively you are taking those 15 credits during the semester and you could actually graduate in two, two and a half years. So we've kind of figured out a nice little recipe to like, okay, if you want to just take 12 during the semester, take a winter one, take a summer one, and then you've really got your 15. Um, so, and we help you financially with that. If, if your financial aid hasn't covered that, the whole bill. <clears throat> So you transfer and that's key. You'll find that like you want to move on after a while. You want to just like, you know, keep going, get out in the workforce or you want to transfer on. Um, TSSers transfer more often. We do a lot of conversations about what major you want, um, you know, where you want to transfer to. How much is that college going to cost? What's the difference between subsidized and unsubsidized loan, private versus public, you know, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> And, um, and we already kind of talked about that, that, the fact that, you know, you guys are recognized as leaders in the community. I can tell you, like anybody I go out in the community, they're like, they already know David. <laughs> He's already known. <laughs> and Aaron, I, I get so many compliments. So you guys are superstars, even before you even know you are. Um, and I just wanted to share um, the, the lady on the right. I'm sure that some of you know it. That's Maddie Butat. She went to Oliver Wolcott High School and she was a CNA. She got her CNA certification there. When I first met her, she was a CNA. She actually did a lot of high school partnership classes, a crazy amount. I think she wins the prize. And she last week, two weeks ago, she got admitted into the nursing program. Woo! So we're so psyched for her, <laughs> um, which is a very, very competitive program. And um, so she is, uh, she's on her way and she's a superstar. She's doing really, really well. So I just wanted to share that. And these ladies over here, ladies and Ed, all of these students are former TSSers. Aaron and David probably don't know them, but I wanted to showcase them because they all started out um, thinking that, I don't know if I can go to college. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it. Sarah is from Canaan, Connecticut. She's actually graduating in May with her bachelor's degree from UConn in human development and family studies. Lisa Lot Rodriguez graduated from uh, the DR came to the United States and took CNA class, failed it two times, <laughs> not because she didn't know the skills, because it was a language barrier for her. She and we, she stuck it out. She was very successful. She graduated in May from um, Central Connecticut State U, and she is applying to graduate programs. I heard Columbia and some Quinnipiac, some really exciting. Magdalene O'Doy is actually an immigrant from Ghana. And she is just graduated from UHart. Actually, May sixteenth of this year, she's graduating from UHart. Eddie Martinez from Gilbert High School, a local fellow from Winstead. He's graduating in May from Southern, and he has been accepted to the honors program for social work at UConn Stores. So, really, really great people. Um, you guys can be that too. And Melissa Malam actually is in her second year. She's from Housatonic uh, Valley. Uh, school and this is from february she spoke before the legislative appropriations budget committee which is about 200 people at the hartford headquarters with all the politicians and she is basically talking about her experience emigrating from algeria and coming to the us and the challenges that made for her and how she is now a superstar and going to graduate in may so just want to share that um all right, um, so I want to put this out here and, and when I talked about civic engagement earlier, a big, uh, they're big, we work on what we call community action planning projects or CAP projects. And these are projects that um, we break into four teams and each team goes out into the community and they work on some project with some community organization that has to do with what that organization wants to do. 
this is not specifically, but this is um, one group is actually going to Torrington Historical Society and taking uh, digital uh, audio uh, stories, narratives of Latinos in the community so that these can be published on the Torrington Historical website because their goal is to get the Latinos in Torrington area to feel like they're a member of the community, that Torrington Historical Society is their community too. And so the students are acting kind of as a liaison or a connection between what Torrington Historical wants and what the students can do. So these are really great projects. And I can tell you when you apply for colleges and many times for jobs, it's, it's important what you do in your studies. It's important to get good grades for sure, but it's equally important and sometimes more important about what you do in the community. And this is what that speaks to. So um, I could talk a whole lot more about that. Uh, the TSSs are actually presenting next week. Uh, their projects that they've been working on all year. So, <clears throat> all right. I don't think I missed one. Let me just go back one. I want to make sure I didn't miss one. No. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so, um, how do I apply? And that's the most important thing. So, in past years, it was different. So, if high school counselors are out there, it is different because we're living in the COVID uh, situation right now. Um, there is an online application on the, our website. So you have to go to nwcc.edu slash success. Fill out that up online application. If you do nothing else today or in the next week, do that because what that will do is it will get you into the list of students who want to apply to the program. And then the second step for you to do is to collect all your supporting documents. Those are listed on the website and don't do anything with them. <laughs> Just hold on to them right now because we don't know how we're actually going to collect these documents um, because we can't mail them. Do not email anything that has a social security number or birth certificate, any kind of, you know, uh, sensitive information. So please do not email anything or mail it anywhere because I don't pick up mail on campus. Nobody does. So just hold on to those documents. And once you fill out the online application, I will have your email address and we'll get hold of you. So literally just hold that packet. It's a lot, a lot of documents. They're really hard to find because you got to talk to parents and aunts and uncles and grandparents. Um, but we'll let you know. And the deadline to have all those documents to us is June 1st, which hasn't changed from other years. All right. Um, uh, I see Andrew has a question here. Let me see. Andrew, um, what I want you to do is, um, and I'll, I'll type it too, is I want you to fill out the online application. And I could talk more about it, but I'd rather talk one-on-one -on -one with you, Andrew. Okay. So um, I'm just going to write this to Andrew real quick. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. So I just wanted to put out here the next step. So after you fill out the application and we have somehow magically collected all your, your documents, uh, we get together. When I say we, it's going to be my grant funder who works out of Waterbury and, um, and Jesse and I get together and we look at all the application packets. If you don't have all your support, supporting documents in by June 1st, your application goes does not go forward. Done. You can fill out the online application, but if you don't have all those other documents, we cannot even look at it. So those applications won't go forward. Um, we will get hold of you, and in early July, we have interviews, and these interviews are face to face. But if they have to be virtual, so be it. I think we can. By then, we'll be real. We'll be rocket stars at all of this. Um, and then mid, mid July, we will have decisions on who's going to come into the program. And I will tell you, and I don't want to scare you away, but I want you to know what the numbers are. Last year, we um, took in about eight applicants. We had 100 applications. So for 100 applications, we took in eight. And uh, this year, it's going to be about the same. We have about eight slots that are available. The slot size changes every year. It depends on who graduates, who doesn't, and what kind of money we're going to get from the federal government. So I don't want anybody to be discouraged out there. If you really want to be a part of this program, it's what you 
come to the table with in your interview and what you say in your communication and your timeliness of getting your application in, all of these little sample points along the way, by the time June comes along, we have a pretty good idea of who really wants to be a part of this program. Okay. And I know like David, I met David when he was 16. <laughs> And, um, you know, and then he popped in, he missed, he somehow missed the boat last fall. So he actually hasn't been to the retreat. But like Aaron, I don't, I know that when you were bringing in documents, you were like, oh, I'll be like, Aaron, you need to bring in like, you know, birth certificates from everybody in the family, or you need to bring in your social security card, not just a copy. All of that, Aaron would go home and she would get what she needed to get and she would bring it back in. And I make little notes in there and it's, you know, it's a commitment. We want the students out of all of those hundred applications and assuming, let's say 100 of them fill in, you know, get all the application packets in, da, da, da. we look at kind of the who students are going to be really committed to this program because we spend a lot of time. You could be with us for three years and we spend a lot of money and a lot of heart to get you to where you want to be. So we want to make sure that you really want to be a part of this. So don't be scared by those numbers at all. OK. Um, Aaron or David, you want to? Say anything before we kind of just open it up for questions. Like you mentioned, um, the fact that I was consistent, so happy and grateful to be in this program. There were a lot of hiccups for me personally that was inhibiting me from turning in all my paperwork early. Um, I have family members who want me to release their personal information. I have to write the forms and I rushed to work and I rushed right back with all my paperwork. So if you're persistent, if you want this bad enough, you there's a spot for you. And that's the biggest thing, like Susan said, just be dedicated. Show that you are committed to this and you want to be a part of this. That's the biggest thing. I just feel so I know there another 100 people who applied last year. And that just makes me feel so lucky that I was one of the eight. So thank you. Yeah, same with me. I'm very appreciative of this program because if it, to be honest, if it weren't for this program, I don't even know. Like I, I'm lucky that out of all the applicants, I was able to get in last minute. You know, it was, it was very difficult and especially with my financial, financial situation, it wasn't as easy as it was for other people. For me, my family is not very financially. Um, I would we're financially stable, but we we don't have a lot of money to be able to put towards through college. And this program has been able to make make opportunities for me and make it happen. Thank you, David. No problem. Thank you. I would love to open up for anybody. Um, actually, I don't know how many people are out there, but I'd love to hear just some kind of questions about the program. Suits, we got a few minutes. And I'm sure you recognize some faces out there on the slides. I don't see any comments in for any questions yet. One thing I did want to mention too. Um, for all my high school seniors out there, I know that in high school, I did not participate in anything. I didn't do sports. I didn't uh, join any clubs. I went to school. I went home, went to work, and that was it. I didn't get involved. I didn't really see the point in it. Um, in college, to me, it was just to get to redeem myself, and that's exactly what TSS does. They give you the resources to be successful, and they lay out so many opportunities for you it's really amazing and it really has changed me as a person because now i grasp opportunities in my path and i don't let them get away and i care so much about getting involved and i never used to in high school so it really does open your eyes to look more towards your future nice thank you aaron did you want to say a couple of uh, things about what the program's done for you you kind of touched on that before david turn your turn your um the screen down a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Hopefully you don't see my pajamas or anything. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, <I'm kidding. laughs> but this program, um, the main one that the main point that I'm going to get on is that I've been able to meet and be able to 
approach opportunities differently from a different perspective. And, and this program has offered me a lot of opportunities that I have, I didn't even see coming. And I've learned throughout this program that opportunities come through different shapes and for different shapes and sizes. So it's been able to create that mindset of, oh, if this opportunity is here and I know that it's going to be helpful, take it and just see where, where it goes in the future. That's really one of the main things that I've seen about this program, that it provides a lot of opportunities for the students. Very helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, so you guys out there listening, we are going, we are recording this and it's going to be, I will be putting it on our website. So, um, if you hear, you know, if you think that somebody else, you know, in your high school or another school is interested in this program, share that with them. And your next step would be to go to our website nwccedu slash success and fill out that online application. Andrew, um, I'll be looking for an application from you and anybody else out there and um, just pop me an email if you're not sure about something question and keep checking back in because we are still in the process of figuring out how to collect that supporting uh, document packet, which is very daunting, very exhaustive um, and really challenging. But we know that if you can get through that challenge of collecting those documents, you could pretty much do anything. That's a tough one. It's a real tough one. You can look at the list. Um, that's about all, all I have. Um, students are great and I love what I do. And I know that my colleagues, Laura and Jesse, are very much dedicated to, you know, making sure that all of our students are successful. And uh, you guys have no idea how much we chat about you. <laughs> <laughs> to the course of a week. Um, but we have a really great program and I'd love to see you guys applying to the program. Um, you know, applying isn't going to marry you. You're not, to, you know, if you decide at some point that you don't want to do it anymore, you can withdraw your application. But don't lose out because I will tell you this, if you start classes in the fall and you find out that you'd like to be a part of the program, it's too late. You cannot apply after you've started college. And that's a really important thing to remember. I have more than once had students who are college students come to me and say, hey, I'd like to apply to this program, da, da, da. And as soon as the day you start classes, you are becoming eligible. So keep that in mind. All right. All right. Thank you, Aaron and David. And thank you, um, Susan. Thank you, Susan. Yeah, and Carissa for doing Thanks. a great job setting this up. And uh, I just want to say again, congratulations to all you high school graduates and enjoy your last month of high school. I don't know what that means for you. Um, I know what it means for the college students who are graduating. It's a real tough thing, um, but don't let it dampen what you've accomplished. And it's a really great thing and congratulations. So hope to see you guys. <laughs>